Hi everyone, it's me again. Welcome back to another video. As promised, I know I'm super late. I'm going to react to the chapters I missed for Black Clover and My Hero Academia. A lot of things have been going on in these chapters. I'm just so excited to talk about them, state my opinion, like what's going to happen next, and so on. I'm going to start with Black Clover, which is I'm, <clears throat> I'm very excited to st start talking about that one because, goodness, the last chapter, um, that cliffhanger was just... <laughs> amazing but a lot of people are kind of pissed off about it but uh, let's begin so for black clover i believe i missed chapters 306 all the way through 308 if i'm not mistaken um basically chapters 306 and 307 uh well my mostly chapter 306 uh it's a very interesting chapter because we get to learn a little bit more about uh Xenon and a Soul Gratis family and the information we you know, were able to get um, man left me with uh, a few questions. So the chapter begins as you know Juno manages um, to hit Xenon. I mean you know he uses his arrow and pierces a hole into uh, Xenon's chest and uh, Xenon <clears throat> cannot believe that he was he was hit he begins to recall his past and this is where we get a little bit of his backstory and even the Spade Kingdom. We learn that there's a fourth uh, Socrates uh, family member. Uh, I believe this might be the eldest of the of the siblings and he tells uh, Senon that like him he has the most affinity to become a devil host. Also we learn that um Zenon gets constantly bullied because how creepy and unusual his magic is. Which, um, doesn't that kind of remind you of, um, Asta? Yeah, it literally, um, you'll, you'll see the big similarities, like, between Asta, Zenon, Yunun, and this new character that we meet named Alan, who rescues Zenon from a bunch of bullies and... They both had the dream to become a uh, commander in chief of the magic defense and they become good friends and in a way also rivals just like also in Juno. The little history we learn about the Spade Kingdom, um, uh, we learn that it's in, in a state of rebellion so there's like a civil war going on and the Diamond Kingdom is constantly trying to invade. So during the journey with Alan and Senon to become like the commander in chief, Senon goes to his brother and states that he's no longer interested in becoming a devil host. And once they get promoted to rank four, I believe, no, division four, they are sent to this dungeon that appear, but inside this dungeon, there was a devil steel in it. And once this devil managed to get out of the dungeon, uh, the squad and everyone is merely overpowered. They're not even able to injure this devil in any sort of way. And seeing the devil's incredible power, Senon is left with a very, very difficult choice. He knows that uh, he could finish the devil, but um, the devil has no openings until he finds one. We see Alan preparing an attack, like literally ready to die to protect the kingdom and his squad. And this is the opportunity that Senon sees. The moment long, um, Alan lunges himself to the devil, the devil kind of stops moving and Senon takes the opportunity, uses his ultimate magic attack and kills the devil but along with Alan. I mean I see that the very difficult choice that he had to do. I mean if he didn't kill the devil everyone in the squad would have died and many others too. That was literally in his mind. I saw that but we could see that doing this choice like really really hurt Sanum but not only hurt Sanum but it changing completely for the worse. After discarding his emotions and coming up to the conclusion that overwhelming power
power is everything, Senna returns to his brother and asks to become a devil host. So this is a backstory we get of Senna and we learn why he's this way and it, it's kind of sad. And as you know, he, he, he stated that overwhelming power is everything. He decides to make a deal with his devil. And in chapter 308, he asks his devil, which uh, his name is um, uh, Beelzebub. I hope I'm saying that right. He asks his devil for a devil heart in exchange of his entire being. And if the spade kingdom um, remains, he could even have his entire soul. So he's literally given everything for power. And once he acquires this devil heart, uh, literally Senum becomes like a devil himself and easily overpowers both Juno and Language, like bad. Oh, and we also learn um, something interesting. I mean, and I can't believe I missed it. Um, during Juno's previous attack, Senum notes, well, notices that uh, uh, Juno kind of like um, the bird at the attack to prevent hitting Langris, and he even taunts Juno that if he would have sacrificed Langris, he would have won already. He would have killed him, and and because of this, uh, Juno made a huge, huge critical error that uh, is gonna cost people's lives. And I just love this parallel right here. I mean, we see that um, Senum sacrificed his best friend's life to save the squad and numerous other people well you know uh diverted the attack to prevent killing Langris along with Senon but because of that mistake he gave Senon the opportunity to get even more power and and he's easily defeated and we see that Langris is the last person standing but before uh, Senon could finish him off Finral arrives to the fight and he and both siblings, both brothers, um, team up to fight against Senon. I mean, that chapter for 307 was amazing. I just love that cliffhanger. Both of the Spasher brothers teaming up together against Senon. So for the chapter that came out for this Friday, 308, we see uh, Langris and Senon teaming up. We even learned that Finral learned the man of method to help him uh, speed up his um, teleportation and they combine their efforts to get as close as possible to Senon to get rid of his defense and get rid of the heart. However, the moment they get close to him and Langris uses his special magic to erase the space, he's unable to erase the devil's heart and are easily defeated. I mean, I was like, oh, man. I was like, ugh. Oh. It felt painful seeing that panel when Juno wakes up and he sees both Langris and uh, Finral defeated. Seeing this, Juno, he begins like doubting like if the choices he had made were the correct ones. I mean, it literally he starts evaluating his whole life, saying, oh, everyone thought I was a genius, this and this and that, but uh, he's thinking like, look what costs, I mean, it costs like half of my members and you know, just starts lamenting and then he remembers the vow he made with Asta about never giving up and to become the wizard king he gets he gets up once again refusing to give up then we see a mysterious like a, a smoky person appear in front of you know and a grimoire, but from the Spade Kingdom, appears right to Juno. And this is the moment where um, I read that people got pissed about the new power-up that Juno got. But honestly, I don't see it that way. As you know, Juno still has like traces of uh, Tetya's and Lit's son, uh, while well, the other twin that got reincarnated in him and the magic that he's been using has been from that little elf, not his. That's what the smoky uh, figure tells them that 
you still have your own power. And we even see uh, uh, Patry. Yeah, Patry, uh, he's outside the kingdom. He's like, as I figured, the wind magic that he's been using, it's from uh, Lit's son. Juno has his own magic as well. And this explains why he has another grimoire. But this grimoire is from the Spade Kingdom, the place he was originally born to. And, and this is how the chapter ends. But honestly, I don't think that um, Power Up is uh, an asshole. Uh, if they were, I mean, people would should have been complaining about uh, Charmy uh, getting to magic attributes. I mean, as you know, Charmy is half human and half dwarf. So she has two magic attributes, but of course one grimoire. But every time she switches to her other persona, her grimoire kind of changes color. As you know, she uses primarily color magic, but once she transforms, she uses food magic. Another example of this would be Mars and Fauna. Due to the horrible experiments they will suffer in the Diamond Kingdom, um, they're able to use uh, two magic attributes at once, but this is artificial. They both use uh, crystal and fire magic. So I'm very excited to see more of this. <laughs> I mean, uh, I'm very excited to learn um, what's the other magic attribute that Juno has. And uh, I mean, I really hope they don't make it too overpowering that, oh, he already knows how to use his other magic like right off the bat. I want to see him struggle. It, it will look good. If you make it too powerful, it kind of makes it a little boring and a little too predictable. Uh, now let's begin with My Hero Academia. Man, for My Hero Academia, I missed chapters 326 all the way to 329. So that's what, like four chapters? Man, so many stuff happened in these chapters. Literally all of them were fantastic. And I just love the information we got. And things are, are about to get real pretty soon. Especially the chapter that came out this week. I'm even more than excited to see what's going to happen next. So first things first, let's begin with chapter 326. So for chapter 326, um, we learn where all my heads all my returns to the site in El Camino, you know, where um, the fight with Deku against his classmates took place with the intention to check on the anti-heroes uh, um, supporters who are still refusing to evacuate while he's still thinking how uh, he has been unable to do anything to protect Deku or help him in any sort of way. And as he's looking on his statue, you know, after he defeated uh, All for One, he begins berating himself for doing nothing and just dragging people down. I mean, it's very, very sad to see All Might literally thinking that about himself and forgetting about all the good things he has done as a hero. And not just as a hero, but as a, as a person. And hearing these words about berating All Might and everything, Stay makes his appearance. I mean, he's completely furious that he's berating All Might and demands to take those words back while he threatens him with his sword. I mean, All Might literally tells Stain that I'm the real All Might and even, you know, gets on his buff form, but Stain still refuses to believe that he's All Might. All Might then starts like ranting about um, how he couldn't handle the uneasiness of the world. And now that he's reached his end point with how the world has turned out after um, the war arc. And unable to protect Deku like he promised to many, many chapters ago. He just feels like he's getting further away from the hero he once used to be and man seeing all my like this really hurts because you start recalling um those moments like that conversation that he had with um Aisawa saying that just staying alive you're doing so much and all my is kind of forgetting the essence of like what makes him 
a hero, what makes someone a hero. And I love that Stain explains this to him. First things first, Stain like literally pulls him and hides him to behind that ice block that Todoroki left and we see a woman coming to the scene to clean the statue and Stain, Stain, sorry, Stain tells him that this lady cleans the statue every single day and this lady is the last person all my saved and I just love like the like the great devotion and admiration Stain has for All Might. He literally tells him what made All Might All Might was not his quirk. Of course not. It was how he was able to always smile and did everything he could to help people. And those embers that he left behind are still burning into the people that still admire and follow him. And those little embers are forming a great fire that must never ever extinguish, but it needs to be taken care of. It needs it needs to be stoked. I mean, before leaving, Stain already knows that this skinny person is All Might, but he just doesn't believe he's All Might because He's literally forgotten what made him a true hero. And I'm, I'm glad that Stain reminded him that it's not your quirk that made you a great hero. It was your personality, your heart that made you a great hero. But before Stain leaves, he leaves uh, All Might with very valuable information. So, I mean, this chapter was just perfect. I mean, it literally reminded All Might like what made him a hero. And also kind of revive his will to continue living once again. Because after Deku left him and how society is right now, Alma just feels like, in a way, almost responsible. But very guilty that he's unable to do anything now that he no longer has a quirk. So Alma really needed to hear these words that it's not your quirk. It's you your heart, your actions, the embers are, are still burning within people. For the next chapter, 327, I love the beginning of this chapter. I mean, I've been waiting to see a little bit of interaction between class 1A and class 1B, and the beginning of it, it was just <laughs> funny. We see that the, all the boys from class 1A have prepared a, a hot bath, and immediately grab Deku like some type of doll <laughs> and just throw him in there. And while everyone is having a good time, relaxing, we see Bakugo still acting his usual Bakugo self. But he also reminds everyone that after uh, what happened and everything, uh, he still considers everyone his rival. And that includes Deku. However, he refrains from calling him Deku, despite that he tells him that there's no need you to force yourself. So I'm kind of glad to see this development in Bakugo. He's not forgetting his roots, his goal to become the number one hero. But it's nice to see that he uh, he's, he's given the respect that Deku deserves. After the bat, we see all the Class 1A interact interacting with each other. Deku once again apologizes for the trouble he stirred once again. And the meeting with it all waiting for, well, I've been waiting for. The reunion with Deku and All Might. I mean, Deku is unable to go to sleep, get some rest, because he knows that he said some very hurtful words to All Might. And once All Might arrives, they both apologize to each other. I mean, Deku apologizes to for pushing All Might away. I mean, even apologizes that he kind of threw the food away and he thanked them for like being there with him. I mean, All Might apologizes for like not doing uh, enough to help him protect him. So I'm glad that they're finally able to talk and uh, kiss and make up. 
I, I just... I just hate not seeing that go with All Might. It, it, it really hurt. I mean, the last time I reread that chapter, oh God, I literally had tears uh, once again. It, it's just a very painful moment in the uh, manga. And man, I can't wait to see it animated. But that's probably going to be <laughs> season seven. All Might then tells everyone um, that the decisive battle is coming up soon. Thanks to the information uh, he was able to get from Stain and Bows to live to see it through the end. After this, All Might um, leaves UA to meet up with Endeavor and the other heroes to very like to discuss this uh, crucial information he was able to get from Stain. We also learned that uh, Endeavor uh, is not staying at UA, as you know, with the Dobby incident. Uh, people don't trust Endeavor that much so in order to avoid like a uh, confrontation from the civilians and also kind of like reduce the uh, the fallout from that um he just wants to avoid inflicting any more pain to his family and we see that the Davi incident it's even affecting um Todoroki both well, Shoto but uh with this going on, Shoto uh, has a goal, which I think is a very nice goal. He wants to prove to people that he has changed. So I'm glad he's he's having this goal in mind. One of my favorite scenes for this chapter is seeing Deku finally going to sleep. And seeing that, <laughs> that little peaceful expression on his face, like just resting on the couch and... Shoto uh, getting a blanket and um, covering him with it. I mean, Deku finally deserves to get a good night of sleep after who knows how many sleepless nights. We also learned that Class 1A has a new goal. Not just to uh, get society back to the way it was, but to make it even better. Then we go back to Hawk's Invest Genus and we learn some new interesting things. Thanks to the doctor's interrogation, the normal research, and the testimonies of the assassins that were sent to kill Deku, they have deduced that Shigaraki's body will be ready in two months. But it's been a month already since the Tartarus outbreak, so they have less than a month left. Also, the evidence that Saint left was a love letter to All Might, but also Tartarus security records. And for the next chapter, 328, we learn what's inside these records. I mean, literally for uh, 328, we go back to the day of the Tartarus outbreak. Everything's chaos and we see Stain, um, seeing uh, one of the guards like crawling like a box, like by being very protective of it. I mean, this car literally begs Stain not to let this information fall into the wrong hands. So, uh, as the last chap as chapter 326, he gives this information to All Might, the only person that he will trust uh, this information with it. Inside the security uh, records, we learn the main reason why Tartarus fell. It was because of All For Want and Shigaraki's constant uh, blast of radio waves inside and out. However, there's something very weird about this. Sansa believes that this is because of the synchronization uh, with the prestige of All for One inside Shigaraki, but All Might just doesn't believe this to be the case. He just doesn't believe that this communication is like a two-way channel. I mean, we have a similar case with um, One for All. The prestige of All Might has access to All Might's thoughts, but All Might cannot access uh, that prestige, uh, like thoughts or even communicate with him unless he's in direct contact with Deku. And because of this, All Might just doesn't believe that this synchronization um, to be this powerful. I mean, he literally believes that all for one wouldn't be able to have such direct control 
over the vestige from so far away and I have to agree with them. I don't know, something else is going on there. Also, those radio waves that uh, Chick Rocky and All For One send, uh, they were able to record a conversation. And I mean, and the message in this conversation, goodness, this conversation revealed that Shigaraki's body will be ready in 38 days, leaving them with even less time, just three days. Then we get to see the UN uh, conference and we even get to see some of the number one heroes from other countries. And they're discussing the situation that Japan is at and the assistance and request for help that and they were in all my ask. Several of these heroes, um, including Salam and Big Red Dot, state their insistence to go to Japan and help. While the number one hero from the US, Star and Stripe, she's already on her way there. I mean, very cool information we got about this new heroes from these foreign countries, but unfortunately I do not have much information. I'm sure those uh, who already watched the movie in Japan, they already know um, Salam and Big Red Dot. I believe uh, Salam is the number one hero for uh, Egypt, while Big Red Dot is the number one hero for Singapore. Uh, we're gonna meet these guys in the movies and I'm very excited to watch the movies coming up in a like in a couple of weeks already it comes up around the week of halloween also um the number one hero for the u.s looks pretty badass it's like a hero from a, a comic book so it's pretty cool the design for uh this hero i mean it's almost like the female version of all might and now chapter 329 which was released um this friday um Things are getting very intense and I'm very excited for the next chapter because those who have read the chapter know that things are going to get quite ugly. But first things first, we go with uh, Spinner and All For One who have been hiding in this secret uh, cave. And we learn some interesting things about All For One and his plans. His first goal was to evade everyone and his next goal next goal is to get one for all which kind of confused me because i thought that would be like the ultimate goal so i'm like even spinner has the same reaction uh, as i did i'm like isn't like one for all like your ultimate goal but honestly i've been thinking a while back like why does he desires one for all so bad so there's still some hints that something is missing. I mean, All For One explains that he's been planning this for many years ahead for this moment as it offers the greatest obstacle and ultimate opportunity. I mean, All For One, as he continues uh, ch um, talking while chatting with Spinner, we learned that his organized crime is like literally everywhere. And while All My may have suppressed it um, in Japan, it's a different case overseas. And he, he immediately deduces that um, once they begin stirring uh, trouble, the nations will start uh, prioritizing the safety of their country first. So goodness, all for one is like literally a mastermind. He's incredibly smart, like he knows. He knows like what he's planning to do. And we even get a little bit more information about the hero Star and Stripe. Um, she's known as the strongest uh, woman in the whole world. And is someone that they have to worry about if she were to intervene. But if they could get their hands on her quirk first, then they already won. So this is literally uh, revealing to us that uh, Star and Stripe's uh, quirk must be very powerful and it could change the the outcome of the war like in a snap so this is already telling us that yeah all for one is planning to steal um star and stripes quirk to guarantee their victory 
We also learned that、uh, Spinner will be the one to support Shigaraki in his crusade as one who spins the tail, reminding him of his status as a、uh, heteromorph. The remaining、uh, of the Paranormal Liberation Front, mostly、uh, specifically the heteromorphs who serve in Spinner's、uh, squad, continue to stoke the embers of the liberation. Also, another interesting thing about this chapter is seeing that、um, despite not liking the League,、uh, Skeptic is still working with them, which kind of like, confused me. I'm like, you dislike the League, why are you still working with these guys? And this is very likely due to、um, Redress still recognizing the League and also、um, seeing Shigaraki's.、Um, Goal to destroy everything, so he's still aiding them. And this could be a pretty bad sign, as you know, Skeptic is t it's very good with technology, and that could really、um, add a huge advantage to the bill inside. Then we see Hogs, f e s t i n u s and Endeavor traveling to meet up with Star and Stripe when they receive a message that Shigaraki has finally shown up. And to make matters worse, Shigaraki goes to Star and Stripe like right away. And this is where the chapter ends. And goodness, things are gonna get very, very ugly and also very interesting. I'm dying to see what is Star and Stripe's quirk because, from what I'm seeing here, her quirk could change the outcome of the war in a snap. So, as of right now, Saren Strike cannot possibly lose her quirk. I'm pretty sure something is gonna happen. I really hope her quirk doesn't get her quirk doesn't get stolen. And they say that Shigaraki's body will be ready in three days, and we still and we're just seeing him right now arriving inside a flying Nomu. So who knows what's gonna happen? Very likely things are gonna get quite ugly. Uh, but, anyways, thanks for watching.、Um, I'm so excited for the, for the next chapter, and I hope to see you then. Bye.